There is one organ which causes high blood pressure, and it's not what you think. And there are specific exercises you can use to target and fix your blood pressure easily. No diet, lifestyle changes, or medication required. Check the link in the description below, but for now, today's question. Are you my doctor? If not, then why do you think that anyone should be using you as a source of medical advice? Studies show that reducing your salt intake probably will result in lowering of your systolic BP by about 5 points. For many people who suffer from hypertension, that is simply not enough to lower the risk of adverse consequences to normal levels. And treatment with drugs like hydrochlorothiazide are often safe and effective. There have been some interesting studies performed that also question the conclusion that salt is tied to hypertension and poor health outcomes. Fatal and non-fatal outcomes, incidence of hypertension, and blood pressure changes in relation to urinary sodium excretion. Understanding the sources of salt in your diet can be helpful to lower salt intake. But having your blood pressure checked regularly and taking your doctor's advice is probably also a good idea. Slash slash CDC. Gov slash salt slash PDFS slash Sue. Because for many people, simply eliminating salt from the diet is insufficient to lower their blood pressure to safe levels. There are many different factors that contribute to or exacerbate high blood pressure. Aside from a high added sodium intake, and salt is made up of both sodium and chloride. These include a person's weight and genetics. For many people, until they can achieve a healthy body weight, cutting added sodium out of their diet, i.e., from salt as well as from processed foods, will be insufficient to lower their blood pressure to safe levels. In the meantime, they need to take blood pressure medication in order to prevent the terrible complications of high blood pressure including kidney failure and stroke. This is just one among many complex reasons why a patient may choose to take blood pressure medication instead of simply eliminating salt from their diet. I provide nutrition counseling to people living with HIV and AIDS. Many of my clients live with tremendous amounts of pressure and stress in their lives. A large percentage of them suffer from mental illnesses of varying degrees. Imagine if you had an unfortunately highly stigmatizing diagnosis like HIV. You might suffer from rejection and alienation from family and friends as many of my clients do. You might feel depressed, too. You might suffer from chronic unemployment. You might suffer from severe food insecurity. You might feel, as many of my clients do, a bit overwhelmed at the prospect of a sudden and complete lifestyle overhaul, which is what is required to eliminate added sodium from the diet. So your doctor might prescribe a blood pressure medication. You know, so you don't die until you can make those incremental lifestyle changes that you need to make. Because compassion it usually lowers one's systolic blood pressure by about 5 mm Hg, so will only be effective in pre-hypertensive and mildly hypertensive people. Here is a list of non-pharmacological lifestyle measures you can take to lower your blood pressure. Unfortunately not many are willing to do it. Looking at what one needs to invest into one's lifestyle in the systolic blood pressure reduction one can attain. You can imagine that in many these measures won't be effective enough so additional meds will be needed. Because sometimes reducing salt is simply not enough to reduce blood pressure. When I was young, in my 40s, exercising, losing weight and reducing salt lowered my blood pressure substantially. And I didn't need medication. 20 years later, these measures are not effective enough and medication is required. I have maintained a healthy weight, don't add salt, and I'm active. But my blood pressure requires medication. Since I don't want to die of stroke or heart attack or kidney failure, I take the medicine and thank the doctor. Because sometimes reducing salt is simply not enough to reduce blood pressure. When I was young, in my 40s, exercising, losing weight and reducing salt lowered my blood pressure substantially. And I didn't need medication. 20 years later, these measures are not effective enough and medication is required. I have maintained a healthy weight, don't add salt, and I'm active. But my blood pressure requires medication. Since I don't want to die of stroke or heart attack or kidney failure, I take the medicine and thank the doctor. Besides the fact that salt reduction, as pointed out in other answers, is not sufficiently effective, Terry's one more important detail, if you don't eat any salt you will die. Seems like the rather significant side effect to your therapeutic plan. Anytime someone uses the word eliminate in a dietary context it's a nearly sure sign. They're making crap up. 